quartz DACs have populated my stereos for over a decade and my enthusiasm for the original Yugo was enormous. Now there is a Yugo 2, same concept but further developed. Since I'm not a headphone listener, I have always listened to my Yugo only over loudspeakers. I know it was in initially intended as portable DAC and headphone amp, although it also has RCA outputs and thus can easily be used as stationary DAC. From what I heard I was not the only one that used the Yugo that way. The recessed connectors, well intended, were inconvenient for they accepted only compact connectors and not all audiophile connectors, and the power switch, also recessed, was hard to operate. I couldn't care less for the unique WTA filtering made the Yugo sound far better than other DACs for that money at that time. Nevertheless, the Yugo 2 recently came to market improving on the sound and a number of practical matters. And since Moore's law dictates ever increasing power to microprocessors, further improvement was achieved here too. Height and depth remained about the same but the width increased a few millimeters and the Yugo 2 now measures 130 by 100 by 21 millimeters. On one short side two micro USB sockets are found, one for the digital audio input and a second for power. A standard Walworth phone charger comes with the unit. As always with these switching mode power supplies be careful where to plug them in. The power input on the Yugo 2 might be well filtered but for instance your amp might not. I've heard people disconnecting the power supply from their Yugo when they are playing while leaving the power supply plugged into the mains. That's the wrong way around. Disconnect the power supply from the mains, the connection to the Yugo is of no consequence. I myself always connect these switching mode power supplies to a mains filter. Not to feed it with a cleaner power but to prevent the high switching frequency to get into the mains that is feeding the audio equipment. Back to the Yugo 2. I am not a big fan of the micro USB connectors but given the portability it is an acceptable compromise. On the far ends are two threaded holes which give the impression a streamer attachment like the poly for the Mojo might become an option. Not that I have any info on this. Court users might notice the legenda next to and above the micro USB sockets. This is also new to the Yugo 2. Traditionally Cord never labels their knobs and buttons and connectors. Talking about buttons, just above the micro USB connectors and best operated from the top are four eliminated ball shaped buttons that let you select one of the four filters, one of six inputs, one of three headphone crossfeeds and power on off. The balls are identical to those on the Mojo and they work fine although you have to get used to the color indication for each selection. On the top also the volume control, again using colors to indicate the position. The right side holds the headphone outputs, one on 3.5 mm jack and one on 6.3 mm jack, a line output on two RCA's an optical digital input on Toslink and two digital inputs on one 3.5 mm jack. This is like with the Mojo with the difference that here the tip and the ring each are digital inputs. This is not standard and while an optical and USB cable comes with the Yugo 2, a 75 ohm RCA to jack has to be bought separately if you can find one. A remote comes with the Yugo 2 and it's an elegant bespoke remote, not one of those general purpose ones of which a number of buttons don't do anything. The infrared sensor is mounted on the PCB so the viewing glass, the porthole as I call it, should not be obstructed. I was surprised how well the infrared signal was received when the Yugo was placed in the stereo rack. And that's a good thing since volume control can't be done over the USB connection. Many portable decks and also the Mytic Brooklyn in my setup 1 can be controlled from the music playing software on the computer or smartphone. 
the Hugo 2 count, which is remarkable for a portable deck headphone amp combi. Don't worry, I won't make it too technical. I've written about the Rockwatch WTA filter in previous court reviews and I won't repeat it here in detail. You only have to know that the more computational power is available, the higher the resolution in time the filtering becomes. Watts programs a programmable chip, a so called field programmable gate array and these become more powerful by the day. The Xilinx Arctic 7 used in the Hugo 2 now is able to work with 49 152 poles that define the position in time, while the original Hugo had to do with 26368 poles. The average DAC chip uses far less poles, like a few hundred. When I look at the measurements I see an extremely linear deck down to minus 120 dBr and a noise floor that is lowered again compared to the Hugo. That's no guarantee for good sound, but it does show how well engineered the Hugo 2 is. Another thing to mention is that the Bluetooth radio has been made stronger. In the Hugo 1 the radio was kept at a low sensitivity for it was intended to be used on the go with the Hugo in one pocket and your phone in the other. But if you wanted to stream in the living room the distance would be a lot bigger and that gave complaints. The Hugo 2 has a more sensitive Bluetooth radio to solve this. As said, the Hugo 2 has six inputs. Async USB, coax1, coax2, optical, Bluetooth aptX and coax dual data mode. The Async USB is USB Audio Profile 2 and thus needs a driver for use with Windows computers. Available from the court side. Apple OS, Linux, iOS and Android all support Profile 2 and thus need no driver. It accepts 768 kHz 32 bit sampling and DSD up to DSD 512. The Coex SP diff input each do 384 kHz but provided the right source is used, the two SP diff inputs can be combined to a dual data mode to do 768 kHz using two 384 kHz streams. The Toslink input is limited to 192 kHz while the Bluetooth aptX receiver only does 44.1 or 48 kHz. Four different reconstruction filters are available. Two use 256 oversampling, one being ruler flat up to 20K and one slightly rolling off to minus 1 dB at 20K. The other two filters use 60 volt oversampling with the same flat and roll off variants. It is a matter of taste which one you prefer and to be honest the differences aren't that big. Although I didn't need uh, the battery, it would be wrong not to mention that two 2600 mAh batteries are mounted that provide in total 7 to 8 hours of playing time. Using the supplied power supply these can be totally recharged in 4 hours. If you would use a 1 amp power supply like many smartphones use, it would take 8 hours. The first version of the Hugo was close to a revolution. I remember saying that you will be hard pressed to find an equally good sounding DAC for twice the money. The Hugo 2 takes that further offering even more resolution in time. With it come sound properties you will expect like an improved stereo image, more precise imaging and cleaner attacks. It also brings more tonality to low notes and it somehow reduces the way your room modes are excited. Really? Perhaps the reason lies in that room modes need an amount of energy over time to get excited. The less time smearing the shorter the pulses are and the less they feed sufficient energy over time to excite the room. So the Hugo 2 clearly outperforms the original Hugo sound wise. Then what about my current reference in my setup 1, the MyTech Brooklyn? Well, 
Especially the combination of the SOTM SMS200 Ultra and the Brooklyn is extremely hard to beat. It offers even more resolution, bringing all the related sound properties to an extremely high level. But it doesn't make the Yugo a bad DAC. As said, it outperforms the original Yugo in every respect. One thing I need to say, it does take over a week being switched on to get the Yugo really burned in. To do this you have to feed it with music constantly for it will switch off after seeing no input signal for 15 minutes. So if you go to compare make sure you use a burned in sample for a fresh one out of the box doesn't come close. With the Yugo 2, Cord brings the Yugo concept to a higher level. Of course sound wise, but also operational. A longer WTA filtering leading to an even better sound support of higher sampling rates, better Bluetooth range, remote control, better place connectors and power switch and even a more powerful headphone amp. And that's a good thing for rapid developments in digital audio make the competition fierce. The Yugo 2 has kept the good things of the Yugo 1 and improved on that. Whether you need to upgrade to the Yugo 2 is a decision only you can make. All the extra features did raise the price to 2190 euros in Europe or 1800 pounds in the UK, both including VAT, or 1995 dollars excluding sales tax in the States. But I think it's still the preferred choice for those that want portability and a very good sound. The Yugo 2 is fit for the coming few years. In the meantime, I keep tracking equally interesting developments. Who knows what's around the corner? Therefore, subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. See the show notes for the links. If you have a question, post it below this video but please don't ask me for buying advice. See my About Questions video to find out why. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon and see super exclusive videos too. Just one dollar a month will do. The link is in the show notes. And don't forget to tell your friends on the web about this channel. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.